Hey guys, Vern here. Today I'd like to give an update in regards to the CPU or processor overclock I did for my new PC build. Now what overclocking is, is taking a piece of hardware and pushing it to its limits. Now the great part is, overclocking has gotten a lot simpler in the last decade. Now I consider overclocking as a hobby that requires a lot of research to get to your intended goals. Now the goal when it comes to a CPU or processor is to push the frequency or speed as high as you can while preserving stability. Now specifically for my overclock of the Intel 6600K processor, I want to get at least 4.5 GHz. Now there are certain factors when it comes to overclocking a processor that you should be aware of. Number one, temperatures. You want to make sure that the temperatures are controlled or at a certain level to make sure that the processor is safe and not damaged but also to make sure that it has a long life. When it comes to the temperature, you want to make sure that your CPU or processor is running below 85 degrees Celsius at all times to make sure that it doesn't get damaged, but also you want to make sure it's running below 75 degrees Celsius on average to make sure that it has a long, long life. Now the great part in regards to the Intel processor is that it comes with a built-in safety measure. Should you ever reach 100 degrees Celsius, which hopefully you never do, uh, it does come with the ability to throttle. Now what that means is that, well, should it ever reach that in regards to the temperature, it's gonna forcibly bring down the speed or the frequency of the processor to make sure it doesn't get damaged. And number two, you wanna make sure that you're fully aware in regards to the maximum voltage or the CPU V core that you can place into the processor without damaging it. When it comes to a safe limit in regards to the voltage that you're gonna push into the CPU or processor, for both the Intel Skylake as well as the KB Lake, uh, your target should be below 1.4 volts. Now, once you've done your research and you know the safe levels for the temperature as well as the voltage that you can place in the processor, you're ready to get started. Now, with all that said, all I had to do was change three things in my BIOS to get to my intended goal, 4.5 gigahertz. The first thing I needed to change was actually related more so to the memory settings because you want to make sure that not only is the CPU or processor stable, but you want to make sure it's aligned with the memory and make sure that the memory is also stable to make sure that your system as a whole is not going to be affected in a negative manner. Now when it comes to the memory, all I have to do is set up the setting for XMP. And what that is, is basically the manufacturer setting to make sure that your memory is running optimally and to make sure that it's running stable. The second thing I needed to change was the multiplier of the processor and to also make sure that all the cores were running in sync. Now when it comes to the CPU voltage, you want to make sure that it's set for manual or fixed to make sure that the voltage doesn't fluctuate so that the system is stable at all times. And last but not least, the voltage or the CPU V core needed to be set for 1.4 or below. Now, once you've saved all your settings in the BIOS, there are a few things that you need to do to make sure that your system is stable. One, the operating system needs to load up. Now, once the operating system does load up and you don't encounter any kind of freezing, any kind of blue screens, there are a few tests you can run to make sure that your system is stable. Certain programs like IDA64 or RealBench run for at least an hour are really good stability tests to make sure that your system is running, well, stable. Another good program is Cinebench. Run that for at least three times or three loops to make sure that everything is stable. Now, if you do encounter any kind of freezing, high temperatures, or reboots or restarts or power downs, then what I would advise would be to lower down that frequency to make sure you get that stable speed. The greatest test for stability, oddly enough, would be to run it on a daily basis like you normally would. Whether it be surfing the web, uh, playing games, running word processors, you want to make sure that your system in its entirety is running stable at all times for daily use. Now when it comes to processors, not all processors are made alike. You may have the same model as everyone else, but each one has its own limit. So all I can say is keep testing, keep testing, keep testing to make sure that you find your goal or limit of your processor to make sure everything is running stable and to make sure that, well, everything works. Now when it comes to overclocking, there is a disclaimer to this. Overclocking in its entirety is a hobby that requires a lot of research to make sure that your processor or CPU or any type of hardware is running optimally at its max speed, but also in the same token to make sure that it's not damaged in the process. So make sure to ask all your questions, make sure to do all the research 
to make sure that everything runs properly. Now, after a couple of days of stability tests, changing the frequency, voltage, to making sure the temperatures are okay, and after a week's worth of daily use, I'm proud to say that my processor specifically is currently running at 4.7 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. Now, once you've found and reached the limit of your processor and you're happy with it, all I can say is, well, it's time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Your processor in its entirety is running at its maximum speed. So have at it, uh, just be safe in regards to the voltage and temperature and you should be okay. Otherwise, uh, well, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching, and I'll see you in the next video.